In this lesson, we are going to discuss the behavior and properties of light. At the end of this video lesson, you should be able to discuss the theories on the study of light and explain the different properties of light. Light is a complex topic to be discussed. The curiosity of people on light started during the ancient times. Euclid from Alexandria explained that light coming from the eye travels in a straight line. He believed that vision emanates from the eye. Aside from Euclid, Claudius Ptolemy contributed knowledge on what light is. The two studied two different light phenomena, reflection and refraction. However, only limited knowledge to even no knowledge at all about the composition of light was available during these times. It was only starting the 17th to 18th century when the nature of light was really well studied. Isaac Newton argued that for light to be reflected and refracted, it must adhere to the geometry of the object being reflected and refracted. The geometric nature of reflection and refraction of light could only be explained if light were made of particles referred to as corpuscles because waves do not tend to travel in straight lines. However, another perspective on light contradicts this theory. According to Christian Huygens, light is transmitted as waves from luminous bodies to the eye and other objects by an undulatory movement. This is the rise of the wave theory of light. To compare the two theories on light, let us look at how light reflects and refracts as a particle in a wave. Reflection is the phenomenon in which light bounces on on a surface. This creates a mirror image of an object on a reflective surface. But how is this explained by the particle theory and the wave theory of light? Light as a particle is like a stream of balls that bounce off on a surface. Meanwhile, for waves, light behaves like sound waves when bouncing on a surface. On the other hand, refraction is commonly described as the bending of light because light changes its direction as it passes from one medium to another. It results to the whole object or a part of the object appearing to be displaced as an image. Light as a particle is refracted by the difference in media that creates force which changes the orientation of the particles. On the other hand, light as a wave refracts due to the change in velocity of the waves as they travel from one medium to another. Reflection and refraction are both explained by the particle and wave theories of light, but these are usually explained using the particle theory of light. Aside from reflection and refraction, the particle theory of light can explain the formation of shadows. The formations of well-defined shadows are explained by the particle theory of light. If light is a wave, shadows will not have crisp edges around them. Common example would be eclipses. The light coming from the sun will reach the earth but will be blocked by the moon in the middle of the sun and the earth. From earth, we will be able to see a crisp shadow created by the moon. This is called the rectilinear propagation of light. In this property of light, it travels in a straight line while traveling through a homogeneous medium, meaning there will be no changes in the orientation and velocity of light. Aside from this, the straight line that will be traversed by the light will be the fastest or having the least time. This is called the Fermat's principle of least time. These three properties of light, reflection as seen in mirrors, refraction as seen in lenses, and rectilinear propagation as seen in eclipses and shadows are all explained by the particle theory of light which are under geometric optics. This includes the properties that are explained using ray approximation for light. From the word itself, geometric rays are used to diagram the behavior of light as particles. However, some properties cannot be discussed with the particle nature of light. Specifically, it cannot answer the results of Thomas Young's double slit experiment. In this experiment, Thomas Young made use of a light source that would pass through a barrier with two holes or slits to observe the resultant light on the screen. Following the logic of the particle nature of light, the light coming from the light source and passing through the slit will be rectilinearly propagated. This should result to these two bright spots on the screen. However, this was not the result of Young's experiment. Instead of having two bright spots, it resulted to a series of bright spots called the bright fringes, separated by dark spaces or the dark fringes. So how did this happen? The experiment shows the wave behavior of light. After passing through the slits, the light emanated as waves similar to water ripples. Since there are two slits, Two waves were created, and just like overlapping ripples, these light waves would also overlap. The overlapping similar parts of the waves created the bright fringes. 
However, the overlapping non-similar parts of the waves created the dark fringes. This phenomenon is called interference of light. Interference is the resultant wave of the individual waves which follow the superposition principle. This simply means that the overlapping waves is the algebraic sum of the individual waves. The bright fringes are parts created by waves with overlapping crests or overlapping troughs. Since these are similar wave parts, there is wave reinforcement or the wave is strengthened. This results to the bright spots on the screen. This is called constructive interference. On the other hand, dark fringes are created by waves overlapping different parts. Particularly, the crest overlaps with the trough. This results to wave cancellation. This is called destructive interference. Aside from the double slit experiment, interference is evident on thin soap bubble membranes and compact discs. Again, this happened because light as a wave will create new waves or wavelets as it passes on narrow holes or slits. This is called diffraction. Diffraction is the bending of light around an obstacle and subsequent spreading of light waves into the region behind the obstacle. This is the reason why light may appear spread out even if there is only a tiny slit or hole. This obstacles illuminated by a beam of monochromatic light from a point source will cast shadows that are fuzzy at the edges. The shadows upon close scrutiny are bordered by alternating light and dark bands. The amount of diffraction depends on the width of the slit compared to the wavelength of light. When the slit is considerably larger than the wavelength, very little diffraction occurs. It can be related to the water pressure on water hoses. The smaller the opening and the greater the wavelength, the more the water spreads out. Another property of light is evident when white light enters a prism and it splits into its constituent colors. This is called dispersion. The band of colors is called spectrum and is comprised of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet light. Red light has the longest wavelength but has the least index of refraction and is therefore bent the least. On the contrary, violet is refracted the most. That is why red is on top while violet is at the bottom of the spectrum. This is evident in rainbows. Upon entering a water droplet at a certain point, part of the light gets refracted. The droplet serves as a prism which disperses light. Light is internally reflected once it reaches the back surface of the droplet. It will then exit the water-air interface in which it gets refracted and dispersed. We usually say that we see rainbows after the rain in which the sky is already bright blue. But have you ever wondered why the sky is blue? Why does it become red-orange during sunrise and sunset? Why are clouds white? The answer is the scattering of light. Scattering happens when particles interact with light, causing the latter to be redirected from its original path. The sky appears blue because as the sunlight enters the atmospheric gases, the violet and blue lights are scattered the most. However, our eyes are more sensitive to blue than violet light. Thus, the sky appears blue. At sunrise or sunset, sunlight travels farther through the atmosphere. The longer distance would mean much of the blue wavelengths or shorter wavelengths have been scattered, leaving only the longer wavelengths to be scattered. Thus, we have an orange or red sunrise or sunset. Scattering is also responsible for the white appearance of fogs and clouds because the particles responsible for the scattering of light are much larger than the wavelength of light. The sun gives us vast color of the sky, but sometimes the light may be too bright because it is unpolarized. This means that the light coming from the sun is coming at different directions, causing glares and difficulty in viewing things. But since light is transverse wave, it can be polarized. When we say that light can be polarized, this means that multiple vibration directions of the transverse waves can be confined into one direction only, reducing the amount of light that is received. A polarized light may be analogous to a vertically or horizontally plated rope. For example, this light is composed of two vibrations directions, but as it enters the polarizer, or in this case the polaroid sunglasses, only a specific direction of vibration will be allowed to pass, leaving the other wave reflected. In summary, some properties of light can be explained by the wave theory and not the particle theory. This is what we call wave optics. This includes interference on soap bubble membranes, diffraction on forest canopies, scattering of light on white clouds and fog, dispersion on prisms, and polarization of light on polaroid sunglasses. The two natures of light which we discussed are both valid. Some properties can only be explained by the particle theory 
some particles can only be explained by the wave theory. This gives rise to the dual nature of light. This means that light behaves either as a wave or a particle. Other developments have also arisen which agree to either of the two behaviors of light. The first one is the electromagnetic theory of James Clark Maxwell. He explained that light is a transverse wave that is partly magnetic and electrical in nature. This means that light as an electromagnetic wave is produced by charges and current and is propagated in space and time. Another development is the quantum theory of light. According to this theory by the German physicist Max Planck, light is emitted in discrete packets or energy called quanta. This means that light is made of particles or photons which have wave-like properties associated with them. To conclude this lesson, light is one of the most complex phenomena on Earth as it behaves as a particle in a wave. This gives it several properties which are evident in our surroundings. To wrap up this lesson, let us review the following key points. Light has a dual nature of being a particle and a wave which are supported by the corpuscle theory, wave theory, quantum theory, and the electromagnetic theory. Geometric optics models light as a ray, it covers reflection, refraction, and rectilinear propagation. And lastly, wave optics models light as a wave. It covers dispersion, interference, diffraction, scattering, and polarization. And that ends our discussion on the behavior and properties of light.